The Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of the magic writing. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Now stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. Helen, I want you to write a question on this piece of paper. What kind of a question? Oh, anything. Oh, uh, there. No, 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 don't give it to me. I want you to take a match and burn up that paper. Burn it up? Mm -hmm. But how will you know... You'll what... know, all right. Here's a match. Burning. Oh, well, uh, put it in the pantry over here. Watch out. Don't burn yourself. The answer to your question, Alan, is June 5th of last year. You asked when Rhoda first came to work for me, didn't you? Well, how on earth did you know I asked that? I burned that paper myself. You never even saw it. That's what all those prominent men asked. What prominent men? <laughs> well, tell him the story, Blackstone. All right, I will, Rhoda. Well, Anthony Blake came to see me one morning, Alan. He was a very respectable citizen. There's never been anything shady connected with his name. But he seemed very upset. He was almost hysterical. You've got to help me. You've got to. I don't dare go to the police. I can't. Think of my wife, my, my position. It's, it's got to be confidential. Anything you tell me will be held in strictest confidence, of course, Mr. Blake. Oh, thank you. Uh, read this. <clears throat> this is just a sample of one of the letters we have in our possession. You wouldn't want them to become public, we are sure. $50,000, if you please. Details later. Well, uh, where's the sample, Mr. Blake? Must you see that? I'm afraid so. Well, here. Thank you. My dearest little ducky wucky. Uh, well, I, I guess I don't have to read all of this. Uh, tell me, did you really write this, uh, this scribble? Well, yes. And uh, this is your handwriting? Yes. Well, I guess it's time I paid a short call on the little lady involved. But that won't do any good. You see, she gave me back all my letters and I burned them. She, she was a decent sort, really, and when I realized what a fool I'd been, she, she gave them back mm, to me. But you can't have burned them if this is one of them. That's what I can't understand. I know I burned them, and yet... Well, I'll see what I can figure out. <laughs> Blackstone, while you were out, five more men came to see you. They've all had blackmailing letters, too. It doesn't make any sense. Those men all live in different parts of town. They've all been indiscreet in writing at some time, and yet they're all sure they've burned their indiscretion. Along with their bridges, I guess. There must be some link tying those men together. There must be some connection. Well, the letters aren't the same. Two today were one to letters uh, to ladies of, uh, shall we say, indiscretion. And one was a letter telling about a jail sentence a man had served while he was a boy, and, and another was a shady business deal. There's no connection at all between the letters. Just a minute. I have an idea. Get me a map of the city, Rhoda. Now, you see, Rhoda, hmm? these men all live in different parts of town, yet they all work near each other. Many of them in the Greystone building. This may be the link we've been looking for. Oh, well, what do we do now? Uh, what time is it? Uh, half past one in the morning. Hmm, it took me longer than I expected to stick all those pins in that map. Well, we'd better be keep going. Well, where? This is a fine time of night to be starting out for any place. Oh, it's a perfect time for us. There couldn't be a better one for us to search the Greystone building. Something awfully spooky about an office building at night. The corridors look so long and full of unknown shadows. Mm. Mm, let's start here with Blake's office. He gave me his key. Mm. Now, uh, find the light switch, Rhoda. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Right by the door. Oh, there, that's better. Well, what do you expect to find back there? Well, frankly, I haven't the slightest idea. I'm just nosing around. Oh, oh Lord bless my soul. I didn't expect to find nobody here this time of night. Say, who are you? 
You're not late. I know him. I'm a friend of his. He sent me down for something. You're the charwoman, I suppose. And you suppose right. Finnegan's my name. Miss Finnegan. Finnegan, I was born, and Finnegan, I'll die. Well, I'd better get on with my scrubbing. Uh, you don't mind if we go on looking around, do you? Oh, indeed, I don't. Sure, it's fine for me to have a bit of company with my work. You know, I was saying to Miss McCarthy, she's the one that does the floors from 20 up. I was saying, what's the trouble with this job? It's not right to what you call sociable. Uh, Mr. Blake said he might have left it on his desk. Well, here, here, don't you be touching that blotter now. Why not? Oh, sure, that's a brand new blotter. Pat put it in himself only this evening. Who's Pat? Well, now, don't tell me you've never heard of Patrick Murphy. Oh, the name's familiar. Well, he was almost the heavyweight champion of the world, Pat was. But then some guy sort of punched him too hard. Uh, and he's not been exactly what you'd call right in the head ever since that sad day. He handles the blotters around here. Well, I thought charwomen generally did that. Oh, I'm sure, and I do wish you'd say char lady. Sounds more refined, like. Well, even most char ladies do tend to blotters, but we let Pat do it. Who pays him? Oh, nobody pays Pat. He just does it for the fun of it, and he's that proud of them. Oh, he keeps them so nice and smooth and all. Well, he's like a mother hen with his blotters, I always say. You know, I was saying so to Mrs. McGinnis only this morning. He's just like a mother hen, he is. Well, I'd best be getting on. Uh, tell me, where does this Patrick Murphy live? Live? Why, right down in the basement here, next to the furnace. Oh, and where else would he live? All of us charladies being so fond of our Pat. Why, we've got to have him where we can keep our eye on him. Well, good night, folks. Good night. <laughs> She's a nice old gal, isn't she? She certainly is. And she's given us the tip we needed. Hmm? Rhoda, call the police and have them pick up Pat Murphy, the almost heavyweight champion of the world. Was Pat really doing the blackmailing? And how was he getting the letters? And how did you know about it? But a lot of questions, Alan Kent. <laughs> Pat wasn't doing the blackmailing alone, Alan. He was part of a huge gang. But when he was arrested, he talked, and we managed to round them all up. He was getting the letters in a very ingenious way. Now, don't tell me he was reading those blotters backwards. No, nothing as obvious as that. Under the blotters he lavished all that care upon was a sheet of carbon. And under that was a blank piece of paper. Anything written at one of those desks automatically registered on the second sheet. All Pat had to do was to keep the carbon clear, collect the papers every night. Then they were taken to an expert penman who copied them from the tracing. But how did you know? Well, I've known that trick for a long time, Alan. It's one lots of phony mind readers use. Just as I used it on you a little while ago. But it was Mrs. Finnegan's talk of the blotters that gave me the clue I was groping for. Poor Mrs. Finnegan and all the other child ladies. Must have been dreadful for them to have their pap hooked up in a crime frame. Well, it was at first, but now they have a new hero, Miss Finnegan. She has the limelight that Pat used to hold. And so, another mystery was solved by magic. <laughs> right, Alan. Blackstone, yes? I don't see that you have any kind of gimmicks with you tonight, not even a suspicious bulge in your pocket. <laughs> Aren't you going to show us any trick at all? Well, now, there. My open palm. That's part of the trick. See anything on it? That's just the usual line. Now, I want you to strike an ordinary paper match, Rhoda. Okay. Got a match, Alan? You women, always wanting a match. <laughs> Here. Now, blow out the flame, Rhoda. Mm-hmm. Now, let it cool a moment. Now, give it to me. Here. Now, tell me, Alan, do you believe in the influence of mind over matter? Well, yes. And again, no. Well, I'm going to show you that it should be yes. Mark the back of my hand with three dots or streaks using the black smudge of the match. Okay. One, two, three. Three large dots. Now, I'm going to rub them from the back of my hand, and while I do it, I clench my fist and will those dots to be transferred to the palm. Oh, come now, Blackstone. That isn't possible. Open it up and let's see. All right. I open my hand, and what do you see? Well, three black dots. They're on the palm, and I, I marked them on the back. How under the sun did... You mean you don't know how I did it? Well, think it over, and I'll tell you when I get back. Have you figured how to transfer those dots? What, Blackstone? Both my hands are black with match dots. 
<laughs> you can't say Rhoda and I haven't tried. Well, we'll smudge Rhoda up a little now. Uh, give me your left hand, Rhoda. Mm-hmm. Yes. First, before you show your open palm, Rhoda, mm-hmm. I take the match and make three black smudges on the little fingernail and the next two nails. Oh, now, after you've ruined a perfectly good manicure, what do I do? You hold your palm up for inspection. Yeah. You notice that your nails aren't in sight of your audience with your hands in that position. I begin to get a glimmer about this. Good. Well, what happens, Ellen? As you plant your fist, you take care to turn your hand slowly so that the nails curl into the palm before they show. When you ask someone to mark the back of your hand, the nails are out of sight. Right. Do that, Rhoda. Turn your hand so that the back shows. But when you do it, curl your fingers under. Mm-hmm. And I'll mark the back of my hand, Blackstone. There. Three black smudges. Mm-hmm. I'll rub them off. Now, mm-hmm. open your hand. Three marks on the palm, imprinted from the nails just about where the dots on the back would come through. That's why you use the last three fingernails. They rub off their marks in the correct places on your palm. Blackstone, that's a great trick. Well, thank you, Alan. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And so, until next time, this is Blackstone wishing you good magic and goodbye. <laughs> Be with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of Two Men from Mecca and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician.